Coach, can you uh, provide an update on uh, Kyle Turris and uh, the rest of your lineup? Right now, it looks like he could be ready to go for tomorrow. So that's that's big for us. So. How much have you missed him in what ways? Well, I mean, when you miss a top center, you, you can't replace that, period. And you just have to uh, uh, try to uh, play uh, other guys, but not ask them to be that particular player. It's, it's like saying, you know, Carlson's not there, let's replace him by somebody else. It's, it just doesn't happen. So uh, you obviously manage it a different way as a coach. You manage it differently as a line. So, I mean, it's... it's they're, you're missing your number one goalie, you're missing your top two Ds, and you're missing your first or second centerman. That's, I mean, those are the worst to miss. Uh, and I think we've, you know, apart from the last game before that, I think we're able to uh, do well uh, enough to, uh, to gather up the points. But I think it's time that, like I always say, you can, for a little while, you can, uh, you can hang on and, and, uh, and still do well. But for a long period of time, at some point, it, it uh, it, it, it starts to hurt you, so this is a perfect time for him to come back. Yes. What goal is going to start against Detroit? Anderson. Is there an update on Boro? Yeah, he's not still not feeling good, so uh, he won't be in the game tomorrow. So we'll uh, go six Ds and twelve forwards. Is it the same, same kind of virus? Thing? Sorry. Is it that no. thing? No. 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 Different thing. So. Hopefully he's, he's better soon enough. So but, that, but you, he was good to go until just before. He yeah, yeah. It was, it, something was off, and, and then, it, then it was really, really not good. So we decided to, to not play him, and it was the right thing because then the next day he was feeling worse. So, yeah. How much of a concern is your goals against right now? They started so strong. And priority. It's a priority. I mean, that's not in the top 10 defensively. We're not going to make playoffs, period. And I think we were at the top of the league before those three games. Um, and for different reasons, it's not the same every game. Uh, it's, but it's everybody. It's, it's the whole team thing. It's goalies, defensemen, forwards. Uh, um, you know, that's a trend that can't continue. It's great to score goals. But if you're going to score goals because you're not as good defensively, then you're not going the right direction. So we want to make sure that we're much better at that tomorrow. Your home record. Hey. Your home record. Right now, I'm not thinking home record. I'm thinking the first five minutes of Detroit. Period. That's for us. It's in the past. Uh, we're not going to carry the, the five previous games and tomorrow's game. That's what we call moving on, and we have to. We have to be better tomorrow than we were last game, opening up the floodgates. So our second period is, is our focus for me because I think in the first period we start, you know, first goal right away and then then a giveaway again, uh, communication between goalie and defenseman. So we worked on that today. We, we made it a, so that was our focus. But really for me, the second period is where we lost the game because at 4-3, they were getting nothing. We were getting our game back. We were looking good. And normally when that happens, you can see us getting better and better in the third period. We look really good usually. And with one goal, it's very rare that we don't get it back. Um, and then all of a sudden we're just trying to force it with a few minutes left in the second period. And that's, that's, that's not a mature way that's going to help us win games. And it hurt us. And then we wanted to get that one back again right away. And then it hurts us again. So it's, it's less of a home thing that it is a, a, a maturity thing that uh, is there. And then all of a sudden it's gone and it's there and then it's gone. And, and we got to be consistent at it. So that's, yes. It's not every day you get to bring your kid to work when you are an NHL coach. I guess what's it like to? Well, it's the first time. It's, uh, you know, I've had the kids come in in and out, but really follow a full day. And she asked for it. I didn't, I never, I never forced any of my kids to, but uh, she loves hockey and she's uh, uh, really into it. Uh, and then she asked if you could spend the day and I couldn't say no. So this was the first time. and. And she asked if she could get on the ice. Of course, I said not during practice, but after practice, and and uh, we're able to do that. So I mean, that's a it's a special day for me. It's a special day for her, and I think it's great for everybody to come and have a a feel for it. Daddy and mommy are doing uh, all day, so now they see that we're not just hanging around life, and we're actually doing something. Uh, but I think it's a it's it's a great day. It's a great day for that. My other daughter's uh, at a law firm. And uh, my boy is uh, somewhere else, but so it's you no, know, it's a great day. I think those are great uh, moments for everybody.
Are you nervous? Are you feeling a little more intimidated with? Oh yeah, I gotta. I just have to watch my words more. <laughs> <laughs> When a player is uh, struggling for that first goal of the season or uh, in a slump, do you spend very much time talking to them? Or you it depends. Like, it depends if it's a it's a, a total slump where he's not playing well, uh, or it's a scoring slump, a point slump, a defensive slump. It really depends what we're talking about here. Say scoring slump. Okay, a scoring slump. Really, most of the time, it's it's two things. One is where where does scoring happen? happens around the net. So usually guys who are in a scoring slump, they're not as often as they should be around the net. So they're trying to, with their skill, to, uh, to, to compensate for the lack of goals that they'd like to get by having better plays, more shots, and where really uh, that takes them away from where the scoring happens. It's, it's the dirty areas around the net. Uh, so just to remind them of that, put them back in, in understanding the percentages and the statistics of it. Uh, that's one. And then two, uh, very often the, the, the player will squeeze a stick because he just wants it so much that it's too much. And very often too much is like not enough. Uh, and scoring goals is a lot about that fraction of a second poise that you, that you take to make the, the right play at the right moment. So actually, instead of getting a person more cranked up, it's the opposite. You got to get them to, to really understand that, that, that it's, it's going to come in the right areas uh, with with the percentage of times that you're going there, not because you, that one moment that you get, you have to score. And I think that's the biggest thing is you, you, you put a lot of pressure on yourself for that one moment that you're going to get in the game. Because very often you get that one moment, but it, you, you, you're so nervous and you're so cranked up for that moment that when it happens, you're freezing and then you don't score. And then you're down in yourself way more than normally when you, you're getting one or two chances a game and you didn't miss it, you missed it, but it's okay. So really it's, um, uh, for me, it's understanding expectations, and then two, it's the preparation. Like, have you prepared to score goals? Like, are you waiting for the goals to happen? And the other thing too is, are you a goal scorer or, or you're a grinder that's not scoring? So, if you're a goal scorer and not scoring goals, I get it. You know, that's that's part of your register of things that you got to bring regularly. But if you're a grinder that hasn't scored a goal in five games and you're there to back check and finish checks and defend well, well, don't put too much focus on that one goal that you haven't got. So it really depends on the players. It's really one person at a time, I would say to that. I'm, I'm, I'm saying like a guy like Zach Smith, for instance. Yes. I mean, he's sort of both, right? He's yes. He's a grinder that can score. Yes. Yeah. So Zach, Zach is, is, will have a tendency when he plays with skilled guys to start skilling it. He wants, like, he'll be with them, like them, whereas his game is to actually complement those guys with his own game, and that will give him the goals that he needs to get. So right now, uh, we'll say Zach's working very hard, but he's working a lot around the net. He's getting pucks for everybody and everything, but then it, he's, he's not necessarily the one that's going to the net because he's making plays everywhere else but except at the net. And in the end, he's, he has to get it himself in there. And that's how he scores goals. He's not a big uh, round one-timer kind of guy at all. Like he gets his goals from short areas and around the net and tips and rebounds and jams. And that's the frequency of times that he's there. So that's why right now I kind of I put him on a different line just to try to facilitate that.